So, uh, can I? Do you mind if I talk to you about Pat Tillman? Because I'd I, love to. It goes to some of the mentality, which I found most fascinating. Because when I talked to you the last time, you talked about you 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 taught a history class at, at West Point. <laughs> that has got to be one of the hardest things to do in the world to teach a history class, honestly, at West Point, because in my mind, you'd be telling these young men and w women that you're, you're being screwed by the very people you just pledged your allegiance to, and you're going to go over and kill a bunch of other people. I mean, if you teach history, so tell me about that experience. It, you know, it was the joy of my professional life. Uh, best job that I ever had in the military thing about West Point is that, um, you know, it, it's not, quite the automaton factory that might be viewed. It is in many ways, of course, especially on the military side. But, you know, there's some real thinking that goes on and it has a real university aspect. However, teaching history there was awkward. I got away with an enormous amount because uh, I wasn't watched very carefully. We instructors were, were trusted. And so I didn't have people watching me a whole lot. My old boss, Colonel Greg Dattis, who uh, writes about Vietnam and teaches at Chapman, was a, you know, an, a sort of an anti-war guy, you know, personally. Uh, but I taught what I learned in grad school and from my reading. And I, I used to make, you know, some people would call me a cynic or a, a provocateur, but I was just telling the truth. I made a point of, you know, kind of complicating and pointing out the flaws in every one of the graduates who had a statue at the academy, whether that was Patton or MacArthur unleashing, you know, tear gas on veterans you know, who were like basically the first, you know, uh, we are the one percent, the first Occupy movement. Right, uh, right. Th these guys are a lot of these things they did were monstrous. And I took a certain degree of pride in it. The funny thing was uh, they thought I was a great teacher because I got good student evaluations and they didn't know any better. And, you know, now I got a, my third book is going to be a, a long collection of basically my lectures. And I think it will shock people to know what I got away with teaching. Uh, but you know what? I don't regret it for a second because I didn't, you know, no one has ever disputed me on a fact for the most part. And that's because it's all out there if you know where to find it. And it ain't that hard to find. So let's talk about Pat Tillman, the NFL, the military and the hijacking of Pat Pil Tillman's story. This is from The Intercept. Tillman enlisted in the military expecting to join the fight against Al Qaeda. And the effort to bring Osama bin Laden to justice instead he was sent to Iraq. All available evidence indicates that Tillman loathed the Iraq war. A voracious reader who consumed many of the world's great religious texts, even though he considered himself an atheist, Tillman was a student of history and formed his own opinions. Shortly after arriving in the country, he confided in his brother and their friend Russell Bayer that he thought the invasion and occupation were fucking illegal. He had loose plans to meet with Massachusetts Institute of Technology linguist and anti-war intellectual Noam Chomsky once he got out of the military. Still, as much as Till Tillman resented the Bush administration's war of aggression, he refused to walk away from the military until his commitments were met, even after conversations between the NFL and the Defense Department presented an opportunity to do so. So first of all, is there anything you want to say about Pat Tillman before I get into yeah. what? Go ahead. A hundred percent. I mean, I, I think that hijacking is the only correct word for it. Um, I think that every veteran out there and every American out there should be just distraught and angry to this day about what was done to Pat Tillman's memory, the way he was, again, hijacked and adulated by this administration, the way they even used his funeral. I mean, do yes. they have no decency, no. sir, right, to throw that line from the McCarthy hearings? Do they have no decency? No, of course they don't. And oh, by the way, some of the people implicated in the lies they told to give him the medal and use, and use his death to promote a war for the Bush administration, some of those folks went on to high command. Some of them are still in the military, and you heard of one because his name is Stanley McChrystal, and he was suddenly a hero until the Rolling Stone story, and he was going to save Afghanistan. How's that project going? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, you know, when I when I was last with you, last point, last time I was on your show, I was staying with Bob Shear and uh, Narda Zacchino, his wife, and and she has worked with uh, Danny Tillman, you know, uh, Pat's mother, on a book which is which is excellent that really gets into this story. And the Tillman family, 
I don't know them personally, but from everything I've read and what Narda has told me, they are livid to this day. And they ought to be because it was obscene what they did. Yeah, it was amazing that I could see what was happening, uh, except somehow MSNBC and CNN and the New York Times, they couldn't see what was happening. It's just amazing. It's amazing. Um, so let me talk to you about. He, he didn't he refused to walk away from the military until his commitments were met. Now, you know, a lot, you, you know, people in that are currently serving who don't believe in the wars they're serving in. How in the hell do you do that? So so talk about that mentality of the soldier. And uh, and, and is it his professionalism that he's now uh, loyal to or is it his fellow soldiers? What is what does that person now put their loyalty to if they can't put it towards the mission? that's a that's a difficult thing that all of us who turned against war in turn you know during our service and i include myself it, i can't get in pat's head but i can imagine some of his thoughts because i had him and i had a female student of mine uh just text me recently asked basically asked me what should i do I, i'm thinking about leaving and that's a difficult thing but i can i can uh conjecture that pat was probably feeling some combination of you know, professional obligation and, and, and this stuff that's built into you, not just when you show up at basic training, but since kindergarten in America, right? Uh, every time you hear the songs and you go to the football games and they become like they have now these military shows and, you know, air shows in New York City, too. You know, there's that. And then there's also that feeling of walking away from, you know, your guys. And from everything I've read, Pat was incredibly loyal to his people, didn't act better than the lowest private from the easternmost hill country of Kentucky. Uh, so there's but there's limits to that as well, as, as I know Pat I must have figured out. And I know I did. And that is that I was constantly told and I allowed myself to be convinced because I like gold stars by the few officers that I did respect that you have to, the good ones have to stay. And I like thinking that I was a good one and you have to fix the system from the inside. Well, you know, that doesn't work in the military or at Goldman Sachs. And, uh, and I found the limits of that. And it seems to me that like every other major war that's been ended or civil rights victory we got, the Kennedys didn't give it to us and the Democratic Party didn't give it to us and they ain't gonna in the future, uh, but strikers and people at the grassroots did. So, you know, I think at some point, some folks are going to have to sit down and have courage that, frankly, I didn't have completely. Hey, this is the part where I tell you where our live shows are, but there aren't any. <laughs> and then I would tell you to go join our premium, but, but nobody has a fucking job. So why don't you just enjoy the video?